You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was uh, 10 years after going home from Woodstock. There's a reason we played that, not just because I wanted to hang out in a bathroom for 10 minutes. There's a reason. I'm going to explain to you why we played that. Before that was the yeah, 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 control. And we started off with Iggy Pop, Gimme Danger. And we're here with uh, Henry Diltz. Is that correct? That is correct. How are you Good doing? Good morning, Steve. How are you doing? doing well. Buddy? You've been on here before. I, I was here a couple of years ago with somebody. Yeah. I can't remember who. Yeah. And we're waiting for John Sebastian. Yes. And uh, Timothy White. Correct. Is, is he your partner? Yes, he is. Partner the Mo- in the Morrison Hotel gallery. Yeah. Yeah. You, you still take pictures? Oh, I do. Of bands, I, young bands? Uh, yeah, y- mostly young bands, millennial bands, Yeah, which is really what I did in the 60s, you know, the Buffalo Springfield, the Birds. I mean, they were... They were millenni- millennials? B- millennial, kind of, you know. I mean, it, before they were well-known, I was photographing them. How, how, how old were they back then, like in Woodstock? Tw- uh, you know, 20s. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, millennials. <laughs> That's right. They would have been. Um <laughs> So yeah, so here you are. You got you got the big show tonight. Yes, indeed. We 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 have a big photo gallery opening. First of all, we have a book signing. Yeah. At five o'clock at the, at our Morrison Hotel gallery at the Sunset Marquee Hotel yeah. in Hollywood, and uh, Michael Lang, the producer of Woodstock, will be there signing his book. Yeah. They're mostly my photos, so I'll be signing it too. Do you, do you, what? Where's the book? Where's my book? Uh, it's okay. That, it's okay. Oh, we left it out in the car. I yeah, guess. It's we, in, uh, it's, he left it in the Uber, yeah, and the Uber's driven yeah, off. Right. It's all good. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. It doesn't matter. Uh, all right. Well, um, what was I going to say? You threw me off now. Um, the, um, sun, the thing tonight, the big, uh, the big old opening gallery opening at the Sunset Marquee. Yes, yeah. the Morrison Hotel gallery. Gallery. And it's all photos from you. Woodstock, 50 years ago, yeah. And you was on the side of the stage. I was right there next to Jimi Hendrix, yeah. Everybody? Everybody. Th- who, oh, three days you were in the same spot? Oh, yeah, I was there two weeks. So but so the whole festival, yeah, three days. Well, on the side of the stage, you know, in the front of the stage, over at the hog farm, you know, all over the place. And how old was you at that time? I was just uh, 30, 31. Okay. And you'd already been a photographer for a while? Uh, yeah, for three years. Yeah. And uh, did you get any good shots of uh, Alvin Lee? No, you know, that's one group. I was over at the hog uh, farm. Well, you're hog the farm? Uh, what are you doing uh, over there? Uh, well, you know, that was the camping area. Yeah. And there was a lovely girl over there. I think her name was Loretta. Yeah. And she was <laughs> chopping cabbage in the kitchen sort of on acid. You know, her eyes were big like saucers. Yeah. And I, I kind of was smitten by her, so I kept visiting over there, and I yeah. missed a couple of groups. You fancied some cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> you might say. <laughs> oh, man, I never see any good pictures of Alvin Lee from, from Woodstock. I wish I'd have got some. You know? So was you the only official kind of photographer? Um, yeah, I mean, there were other people that were friends of Michael's, but I was the guy, he flew me out from L.A. and he paid me, you know, so that makes me the official photographer. Yeah, yeah, and you own all your photos from there? I do. Well, I, you know, I own them with Michael. We share them. Yeah. Yeah. And and people, what's the, what's the most popular picture that sells? Well, two of them. From... One, one is John Sebastian yeah. out at the edge of the stage from behind, showing that whole crowd of 450,000 people yeah. wearing his tie-dyes, yeah. which he tie-dyed here on Barham Boulevard. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, and he, he, was, uh, he took psychedelics that day and came to yeah. the festival. Think- and, they, and they didn't have the next act, hadn't arrived by the helicopter, so they thrust a guitar in his hand and said, quick, get out there, yeah, just sing something. Do something. <laughs> yeah, 450,000 people are waiting <laughs> for something. Yeah. yeah. And the second one, of course, is Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Um, so and- he, he, he was on, this was all in the morning. These were all in early the, in the morning. Early well, in the morning. John was in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Jimi Hendrix was uh, was uh, early in the morning. Yeah. Just at daybreak. Yeah. 
And here's John himself. There he is. Himself. Right how from, are you, Henry? Right from the edge of the stage. John, yes. how, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm good. Nice to see you. You look well. Lovely to be with you. You look good. Good. <laughs> Do you, uh, are you, can you speak into the mic? Yeah. Let me, uh, Do you want headphones? Do you want headphones? Mm -hmm. Sure, like headphones so. if you like. Sure. I'm okay like this, am I yeah. not? As long as you're in the mic, that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. You're a pro. You must. You know. You know what a microphone is. Sure. There's your volume down here. Follow the the cord. Is that better? I see it. Yep. You look good in cans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've I've cultured a certain look. Yes. We were just talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling him that you know one one of the best pictures besides Hendrix was you out at the edge of the stage. That afternoon, right? You know, as a big surprise to you, right? Totally a big surprise. Not on the to bill. Me, not on the bill. Suddenly, they shove a guitar in your hand and say, "Quick, get out there, <laughs> sing something!" Right? <laughs> That's essentially the way it went. Yeah, and you, and you did. And I always say, he spoke to that crowd as if it was his best friend. Yeah, it was so so beautiful, so kind of calming, and so you know. And in many ways, that was the situation. It was just. <laughs> A larger version of those wonderful encounters around a coffee table with people passing a joint and talking crazy ideas yeah. and and uh, boy here was a crazy idea that had materialized you know <laughs> yes indeed that's that says it very well who was meant to be on when you got a shoved good up? question mm -hmm. that part that information has escaped my aging brain I I, I really don't know uh, uh, I know Santana was somewhere in that proximity, and yeah. I know Joe Cocker was also hovering around. Uh, and that that was a daylight thing too. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, but it's very funny how often uh, not only audience members but acts don't have the right order in their memories yeah. of what happened mm. when. Yeah. It's an easy thing to lose track of. Maybe maybe he was down at the cabbage farm. <laughs> he could have been. You missed that. No, the hog farm. <laughs> the, hog, the hog farm. I like That's the it. cabbage farm better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you still playing? Every day. I mean, I mean like I, I leave you uh, and uh, tomorrow I'll be off to Charlotte. North Carolina, yeah, and then a uh, little Asheville, and uh, uh, then there's a couple of big sort of Woodstockian scale festivals, uh, also in North Carolina, and uh, and yes, as the short answer, uh, I'm working as much as I ever have. Yeah, do they is that do they always like they f try to reenact Woodstock? Well. I'd say there was an attempt once, right, and it didn't kind of a reenactment of Woodstock. Yeah, you know, tried to do a Woodstock again. Well, they tried th this year. Well, they tried. Michael Lang, of course, tried, if, if but but he lost. He, they wouldn't give him camping permits. Yeah. They wouldn't give him the. You know, that's why you can't reenact it because it was a whole you different could, ball game back yeah. then. And and yes, and and really more for more reasons than that. I mean, if you use some of the more recent attempts to gather folks together and call it Woodstock, it was already at an era when uh, beer companies had uh, figured out that that would be an enormous number of uh, yeah. beer drinkers. Yeah. But of course, the drug is not the right drug for a, a gathering, yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. whereas herb is a kind of a much more logical mm. thing. I wonder if a, a herb can do sponsorship now. Now yeah. that's logical, right? In I California, think, I think for they sure. can, right? Yeah, legal. I think so. Yeah. Is, is there an actually a company though? Whoa, well, many are you companies. Kidding? Look at the post, <laughs> uh, the big uh, posters that are up now. Billboards, uh, right? Yeah. Billboards all over Los Angeles. Yeah, but they're little <laughs> shops. They're, they're talking about shops, right? Yeah. No, but it's not big, like okay. Coors Light. It's not like. Is there a big company that's got bulk weed? Well, it's really comical because the answer is yes. Yeah. And there's also, when you go to, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, I travel all over. I had some gigs in Oregon. And 
those pot shops are not little bodegas. They're like the size of a Lowe's or a Builders Emporium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, here's the front with the normal little papers yeah, yeah. and tragic little pipes and so on. But boy, in the back, there's every possible jungle in there. A way to grow it and all of the necessary agricultural tools to grow it. And, and uh, yeah, I, I was approached by a very attractive and, and very young woman uh, who worked at the, the weed store saying, and can I help you, uh, sir? And I said, you know, an old pothead just needs a minute to absorb some of this. <laughs> it's remarkable. Yeah. About, you know, our, our little pushing little towels underneath the door. Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. What are you doing, guys? Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, Mickey Dolan's told me something in the 60s yeah. when we were smoking it together every day. What did he say? Uh, he said... You know, if they ever make this legal, it's not going to be fun anymore yeah. because, you know, this is a private thing we do. It's illegal. It's like, you know, we're, we're brothers kind of doing the brothers and sisters doing this, you know, and we're, we're this. It's like blow. You go in the bathroom and bond with someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Same yeah. concept. Yes. Is, that, leg is that legal? Blow? No, no, uh, no. I don't know. That's yeah. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah. <laughs> God, God, God's herb, I call it. You would say God's herb. Herb. God's herb. It's that one word that the lime is say opposite. It's, it's the yeah. only word we say. You say herb. herb. Yeah. You guys say herb. Yeah. Yeah. But that's if you say God's herb. But we never use H's in a lot of the other words, right. American words. Exactly. That's right. It's funny. But if you say God's herb, it sounds like you're talking about a guy. Yeah. You know? Herbert. Yes, Herbie. Right. <laughs> We're going to play a song. We're here with John Sebastian. We're going to play one of your songs, funny All enough. All right. And we're here with photographer Henry Diltz. And we're still waiting for someone else, right? Or is that it? Uh, Timothy White is standing over there, my uh, the co-owner. You don't want to sit down? I'd love to. Sure. Have yeah. a seat. We're going to play this song. We'll be back in a minute. Take it away. Uh. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was John Sebastian. Rainbows all over your blues from live at Woodstock. We happen to have John Sebastian in the studio and Henry Giltz. Am I saying it right? Giltz. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> Close enough. Giltz. <laughs> and Timothy White. Yes, sir. You two are both co-owners with the Morrison... Hotel Gallery. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We are. You got both the photographers. Yeah. And he's a, f a photographer, celebrity, movie star photographer. Oh, excuse me. Yes. And you're both doing a thing tonight? Well, it's really We're all Henry, talking. Yeah, John Sebastian and, and Michael Lang's in town to join us. It's yeah. going to be quite an evening. Yeah. The guy, the guy kind of the promoter. Was he the promoter? The guy that put Creator? it together. Yeah. yeah. Producer. It was his dream to have three days of... What was it? Love and music. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Did he, uh, was he uh, an, a wreck afterwards? No. No. No, he's a very calm, almost cherubic guy. You know, and he says, I've heard him in, you know, in, in, in interviews, he says, when things get weird, I get calm. Yeah. Which is a good trait. Yeah, we've yeah. seen it happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm the opposite. When things get weird, I, I split. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's good. So it, it's a book signing too? Yeah, that's Michael, right. Michael's yeah. got a book out, so we're doing a book signing in the gallery tonight yeah. with him. Yeah. And then from there uh, up to the Villa Pool at the Sunset Marquee Hotel yeah. um, where we're doing this event. We've uh, yeah. put up, up walls and doing an exhibition, and these three gentlemen are going to talk about the anniversary of yeah. this event. It's a book. It's a beautiful book. There have been a number of books. And Michael Lang himself put a book out shortly after, you know, back. In, but this book, it's a great big coffee table book. And it looks like that poster, the orange poster with the dove sitting on the yeah. guitar neck. And it's um, for the first time, he's like 
it's his words all the way through the book. And it's not so much about the performance, but about the, the crowds and setting it up and how it all happened, yeah. kind of the history of, of how it all came to be with his own personal commentary yeah. and tons of photos, uh, many of which are mine. Yeah. Do people still like buy photos? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, we have a successful what? business. It's all every you know, day. Yeah, I mean, music resonates with all of us emotionally, and I think that's the that's the model of our, yeah, our gallery. Yeah, now, I bought some photographs off of Mick Rock. You know, you know Mick Rock. Mick Rock. Yes, we you know, represent him. In uh, in October, I'm doing a tour of the East Coast with Mick Rock. Yeah, a slideshow tour. Yeah. I do my Laurel Canyon slides, and then he does all of his London slides of. Bowie and Queen and all. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. I bought I bought a few photographs of him and, and I, do, I bought a set of David Bowie's uh, spiders from Mars from him. Yeah, where he's numbered them and and put his name on it. But that was ten years ago, and now I can't get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they go up in value. Not these ones. <laughs> Should they we, con will. Should they we consign will. them, Henry? What? Should we you consign should them and see if we can make them <laughs> yeah, a few dollars? Do it, please. Sell them back can to you? us. Yeah. They're all numbered and that, but well, I sure. think, ain't that like a thing where pe uh, photographers number them, but then yeah. a couple of years later, they, they put some more out anyway, different no, no, sizes? No, no, no. no, no. Don't no, give away no, the that's secrets. That's illegal. That's yeah. illegal. No, it, there, it's a... It's illegal? <laughs> it's an addition number. And if you say there's only 100 of these in this size... Then yeah. that's it. Yeah. You can make a couple for your friends without a number, yeah. but basically all the ones you sell have a sequential number. Yeah, I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. I can Steve. sell. I can sell you straight up. <laughs> Don't know about me, Rock. <laughs> um, so what else, man? Um, do you live in Do you live in California? No, John? I'm I'm the uh, the lone uh, rem the, the lone uh, remainder in Woodstock. Do you still live out there? I live in Woodstock. Did New you York. live there when when you did Woodstock? I did not at that point. Yeah. I was still living out in Burbank, California. Wow! So you're from California? No, I'm a New York kid. I'm born in Greenwich Village, and. Uh, zipped around my father was a classical musician yeah. so i would end up in europe uh, very often during the summers while he toured and what were you doing in burbank well it's a good question i'd say that it was a kind of a moment for me uh as, as kind of a newfound freedom uh, I had recently had a divorce and also moved from the East Coast yeah. to the West. Yeah. And just through an association, strangely enough, with a, uh, a, a partner of Henry's in a band called the Modern Folk Quartet, yeah. uh, had managed to rent Lady Barham's Hunting Lodge from the 20s, which back then was a place that you could hunt. Is that why the street's called Barham Boulevard? Yeah. It, that is why, yeah. yes. Interesting. Yeah, and we were, uh, everybody was managing to find habitation in a garage or a little out, you know, a little house that had been added on. You know, California kind of permits these kind of things. Back then, yeah. Back then, especially. I didn't mean permits, but I just meant the, the physical setting. You, you can really. There's only a month or two when you even need a, a catalytic heater in a, in a tent. So I was living in a, in a tent in Burbank. And this was and this was uh, mid '60s. Uh, this is late '60s. Late '60s. I see. And John was living in a tie-dyed tent. Well, he tie-dyed all the sheets and pillowcases in every piece of clothing he owned. Absolutely. As I mentioned before you got here, John. That yes. was your thing? Just tie-dye everything? Well, tie uh, it, didn't, it didn't start out being my thing. There's a wonderful, uh, uh, instructive woman by the name of Ann Thomas, who was also renting in this funny little complex. And one of the things she did all day was... It started off as uh, nail uh, batiking and then tie-dyeing. 
And uh, all of us said, oh, would you tie-dye us a thing? And she said, get out of here. Tie-dye it yourself. Yeah. There's a pot full of blue. That's green over there. Yeah. And so that was how all of us ended up, you know, it was daily that and uh, anybody who would arrive at this little, what we called the farm, yeah. would inevitably in 10 minutes have all their clothes in a dye pot. And they were waiting now for their clothes clothes to see this was a process that isn't just you don't just put in uh, a, a garment uh, into a purple uh, pot and c it comes out purple what happens is you take it out purple you hang it up in the sun and it slowly turns to its polar opposite on the color scale so you will suddenly have a yellow garment where you had purple and this is you know red turns green and all of that uh, so tricks of the trade it's wow. the tricks of the trade did acid have anything to do with it though? <laughs> the changing well, not, of the changing of the colors you know everybody wants that to be but i i just don't know i, I see the thing is i wasn't you a wasn't psychedelic one of them. Yeah. guy me neither i i loved pot i uh, i i even liked uh mushrooms yeah. but once you got to humans uh putting this thing together i i didn't uh i i i didn't try it so i but i i knew i wouldn't like it yeah i tried it twice i hated it mm. i wanted to get off and i couldn't you know i mean i wanted it to stop yeah you yeah. know and it was the nightmare i'd look in the mirror i'd see a skeleton and stuff <laughs> oh god i loved it well it's yeah. di di different minds it's yes. different minds you know yeah, i didn't right. look in the mirror you should have <laughs> <laughs> or maybe but this lady that he's called ann thomas i forgot her real name because we all called her tie-dye annie yeah that was her nickname and, and she, she taught, taught all of us yeah. really she so did. that there was an enormous output of tie-dye from that location yeah. but it wasn't all annie's most of the good stuff really was annie's yeah well you just get a regular old t white t-shirt well, Did anything, they have to be white t-shirts? So, no. Uh, if you started with cotton, that was advantageous because it would absorb the dyes and things. But don't forget that you can also tie bleach. So I did a couple of garments where I'd start with a pair of, of uh, uh, Levi's that were a dramatic color, whatever mm -hmm. it be. Then you... Uh, scrunch it up and put uh, the rubber bands on it and throw it in uh, bleach and water that's, you know, usually you, you heat it up and have it really good and hot so that it's more like a thing that you're dipping it in and, and you can hear it go and that's it. You, now you take it out and throw it in cold water because the entire garment will you just die if you don't. Tie die. <laughs> yes. So do you do you still partake in this uh, ritual? You know, I did a couple of years ago. There was a need for a couple of garments. And what I did was there in modern times are so many tie-dye companies that it was very easy for me to talk to one of the folks from one of the tie-dye companies around Woodstock. They, they do all, in fact, I think they do all the grateful dead stuff and so on and ask them if i could use their dye pots so i just uh just uh what when you say a pot what what is it just a bucket yes it's just a, a any kind in. of a container yeah really anything big enough to absorb the gar to so that the garment can actually submerge Oh, in the cases where that's where you want. But, of course, there's other situations where all you're trying to do is maybe get a, a nice color around a ruffle or something. And so you just dip the ruffle in and pull it out. This is interesting. Oh, it was so much fun doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that. Then. That's that, man. <laughs> I'm going to go home and find a pot. Me too. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait. Yeah. I don't think I've ever worn a tie-dye thing it's kind of not not our thing the sex yeah. pistols uh -huh. how about love beads yeah. oh definitely not oh, definitely <laughs> not <laughs> hate beads used to wear <laughs>
But uh, yeah, let's give another plug, yeah? Tonight. Where are you, yeah. Henry? Uh, we're at the uh, Sunset, <clears throat> Sunset Marquee Hotel on Alta Loma, just next to uh, Sunset Boulevard. And uh, at 5 o'clock, we have a Michael Lang Woodstock book signing. And then at 7 he's o'clock, gonna be there. he'll be there signing his book. And then uh, 7 o'clock, we have a big VIP party around the swimming pool where, where John and Michael Lang and I will walk around and, and reminisce in front of all the photos. You gonna do a, you going to play? No. Oh, John. He refused. We could reenact, push you out. Like, go on, do yeah, something. Right, right, reenact. Yeah, there you go. Let's reenact that. You got your harmonica. John yeah. is he, one he, of the he, best he, harmonica players know, in the world. I know, but I can tell by his face. He ain't interested <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, it's just, a, it's, it's a different scale. And no one, I do and, and something it, for a living, yeah. and there's two ways to do it. That's right. I can talk about it, or I can do it. And to do it requires... Not an extravagant refrigerator-sized amplifier, yeah, yeah. but I need an amplifier. Yeah. If you're just doing it an acoustic, all, everyone would just be talking. You won't even bleed near yourself. <laughs> well, right. Plus, we couldn't afford them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're going to go into Red House um, from Woodstock. We're here with John Sebastian of The Loving Spoonful, photographer Henry Dilt. And Timothy White, Jonesy's jukebox, Calloway's. Listening, ah. Listening to Jonesy's jukebox on Calloway's. That was Jimi Hendrix, Red House, from Woodstock. And uh, we're here with John Sebastian and uh, Henry Diltz and uh, Timothy White, uh, photographer and co-owner of the Morrison. Hotel. Now, Henry, you was at the side of the stage when that was happening, the Hendrix thing? Yes, I was. And it was early in the morning? Early in the morning. I was asleep in the back of my station wagon parked behind the stage. you just come back from the hog farm. Yeah. <laughs> Had some cabbage for breakfast. No, I, I, and I was asleep and I heard Chip Monk's voice say, Ladies and gentlemen... Jimmy Hendrix. Yeah, and yeah. I jumped out of the station wagon, ran up the backstage, and was standing right next to him on stage. Well, a little bit away. You Did know. you have an, a laminate? Did they have laminates yes. back then? Oh yeah, I had a laminate. But the problem is, if you'd leave the stage, you go to the hog farm, you come back, say, well, the security would say, well, you you don't have the right pass. You need the purple dot. On yeah, the laminate. it just changed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. And uh, was Hendrix? Big at this point? Yeah, I mean, he'd play Monterey, he'd play Monterey Pop. And and what he, albums? What albums had he had well, out already? Couple? I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm just I'm trying to sure. figure out why he was on at nine in the morning or whatever. Well, he it was. was the, well, you know, he wasn't intended to be on at nine in the morning any more than the Who were intended yeah. to be, mm. and it's god awful hour of the morning. It was the the way that this thing all began to emerge after folks couldn't get to the stage on time or mud prevented a given band from really loading in. And so the, those little intervals kept growing yeah. in between every act. And so that, that was how it was that yeah. so many people, and and really, what are, what are you doing? You're holding Jimmy till the end because nobody's topping it. Yeah. So that was really yeah. that was to his disadvantage in yeah. a certain way. But on the other hand, much easier to photograph, I guess. Well, but also more to our advantage. I mean, think about yeah. it. Yeah. Star Spangled Banner first thing in the morning, and in, in, in that in that setting with people leaving, and uh, I mean, what a moment. Yeah. That but, early morning dawn coming up, and he's playing that Star Spangled yeah. Banner, and that. That green hillside, you know, that had been a green alfalfa field and then was 450,000 little faces out there covering the whole thing. And then now was a muddy, yeah, uh, just a muddy, yeah. you know, like a battlefield kind of with uh, soggy sleeping yeah, yeah. bags and stuff laying around. So it was, kind of, it was kind of shambolic then as far as artists getting them uh, on. It was kind of, it wasn't like... 
Yeah, it wasn't organized perfectly. Yeah. yeah, no, and in fact, in later attempts at duplicating Woodstock, right. they would always have that right. They would have figured out, oh, yeah. we can have an enormous circular stage, and it revolves, yeah. and the next act goes right on. You know, took the fun out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, H- Hendrix was supposed to go on Sunday night. Yeah. But you know, eleven something like that yeah. as the headliner. But but then they were so backed up that it was Monday morning. Did you get any pictures of Shannon now? Yes, I did. Uh huh. They were great. I I got most everybody. Yeah, except Alvin Lee. Alvin Lee. Because you were busy. Yeah, I missed uh, I missed uh, Santana as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, what are you gonna do, Henry? <laughs> it's all good. Listen, thanks for coming by. We're gonna knock it on the head. And um got your thing tonight. Give it another quick little plug. Yeah, go ahead, Timothy. You tell him. Five PM book signing in the gallery at the Sunset Marquee Hotel with Michael Lang. Seven PM up at the Villa Pool with Michael, Henry, and John Sebastian reminiscing on the anniversary, the fiftieth anniversary of Woodstock. Cool. Thank you, John, for coming by. And uh, Timothy. My pleasure. And Henry. Thank you, Steve. We're going to visit the Duke. And, then we, and we got uh, Alex Eber of Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros up next. See you in a minute. The KLOS commercial free ride brought to you by the.